Hey, hi everyone, and welcome back to this video series on Windows Server 2016 Learning PowerShell 5.0. Let's be honest, the majority of us are still using command prompt on a daily basis. I shouldn't speak for you as a reader if you have caught over and are using the newer PowerShell prompt um, as a total replacement for command prompt. I definitely applaud you. I, however, do still tend to open up open up cmd.exe as a matter of habit so there with the release of windows 10 and windows server 2016 i'm definitely making a more conscious effort to use the newer bluer prettier and more powerful interface that is powershell 5.0 in this chapter we are going to explore some of the reasons that you should do the same other than the fun fact that Microsoft seems to have shrunk the default text size in command prompt to the terrorists from using it, which I find pretty funny. We are going to take a look at some of the technical reasons that PowerShell is far and way more useful and powerful than command prompt could ever dream to be. Why move to PowerShell working within PowerShell, PowerShell integrated scripting environment remotely managing a server desired state configuration. Why move to PowerShell? I don't think there is any question in people's minds that PowerShell is indeed the evolution of command prompt. But the reason that many of us still default to the old interface is that it still has all the capability to accomplish what we need to do in our servers rather what command prompt really contains is the ability to do the same things that we have always done from command prompt and nothing else. Without realizing it, there are a lot of functions that use the GUI to accomplish that cannot be done well from within a command prompt window. The limitations within command prompt that force you into using your mouse to interface with the GUI does not exist with PowerShell. It is fully comprehensive and capable of modifying almost any aspect of the Windows operating system. How did Sharp, sorry, how did PowerShell come to be so much more powerful than Command Prompt? It differs from any classic IO shell in that it is built on top of .NET and runs much more like a programming language than simple in and out commands. CMD lets. Most of the functionality that a server admin will use comes in the form of CMD lets, pronounced command lets. These are commands that you run from within the PowerShell prompt, but you can think of them as tools rather than simple commands. CMD lets can be used to be both to both get information from a server and set information and parameters onto a server. Many CMD lets have intuitive names that begin with get or set and similar to the way that most command line interfaces work. Each CMD let has various switches or variables that can be configured and flagged at the end of a CMD let in order to make it do special things, it is helpful to understand that CMD lets are always built in a verb noun syntax. You specify the action you are wanting to accomplish, such as get or set. Then you set your noun is this, sorry, is the piece inside Windows that you're trying to manipulate here are a few examples of CMD lets in PowerShell to give you an idea of what they look like and how they are named in a fairly simple way. Get net um, IP address with this CMD let, we can see the IP address of our system, set net IP address. We can use this guy to modify an existing IP address, new net IP address. This CMD let allows us to create a new IP address on the computer, rename computer as we utilized earlier in the book. Rename computer is a quick and easy way to set the computer host name of a system. If you're ever struggling to come up with the name or syntax of a particular command, TechNet 
has a full page of information dedicated to each CMD let inside PowerShell. That can be incredibly useful, but sometimes you don't want to take the time to pop over onto the internet just to find the name of a command that you are simply failing to remember at the moment. One of the most useful CMD lets in PowerShell shows you a list of all the available command CMD lets. Make sure to check out get command. There are pages and pages of CMD lets rather than scrolling through the entire list in order to find the one that you're looking for. It is easy to filter this list based on any criteria that you would like. If we were interested in seeing only the commands that deal with the IP address, we could give this a try. Get command name IP address. PowerShell is the backbone. As you discover through this chapter, interfacing with PowerShell puts all um, kinds of power at your fingertips. What I sometimes find though, is that admins don't fully trust PowerShell because they are used to taking these actions and making these changes from a graphical interface. After running a single PowerShell CMD let to set a configuration that would have otherwise taken you a dozen different mouse clicks in order to accomplish the same thing, it is easy to think that it must not have actually done anything. That's way too easy. And it processed my command way too fast, right? I'd be better go into the graphical interface anyway, just to double check that PowerShell actually did the job. When I started using PowerShell, I was tempted to do exactly that all the time, but the more I used it and the more I started digging into those graphical interfaces themselves, the more I realized that I'm not the only one using PowerShell. A lot of administrative tool GUIs use PowerShell too without even realizing it. You use PowerShell for quite a bit of tasks inside the Windows Server operating system. When you open up that management console for whatever you happen to be changing on the server, make your configurations and then click on the go or finish button. How does that console put your configuration into place? PowerShell under the hood in the background, the console is taking the information that you input, plugging that information into PowerShell CMD lets and running them in order to do the actual configuration work. So if you're hesitant to start using PowerShell because it just feels different, or you just don't trust the process to be uniform so the way that it would have worked in the GUI itself, forget all of that. Because many times when you are using mouse clicks to change settings on your server, you are actually using PowerShell CMD lets anyway, scripting. The more you use PowerShell, the more powerful it becomes. In addition to running ad hoc single commands and CMD lets, you have the ability to build extensive scripts that can accomplish all sorts of different things. I mentioned that PowerShell has similarities to a regular programming language. And scripting is where we start to navigate into that territory. PowerShell provides the ability to create script files. We will do that for ourselves coming up shortly to be able to save them for easy running of those same scripts time and time again. Variables can also be used like in other forms of coding so that you can provide variable inputs and objects that can be used by the scripts in order to make them more flexible and squeeze even more functionality out of them. Server core and nano core. If there was any area where I think we as server admins could do a better job of using the technology at our disposal, it is using PowerShell to fulfill the Microsoft model of centralized management. When we have a task that needs to be accomplished on a server, it is our default tendency to log into that server and start doing the work Logging into the server is becoming more and more necessary, and we could save a lot of 
time by using the central management tools that we have available to us. PowerShell is one of these tools rather than RD ping into that server, simply use the PowerShell prompt on your local machine in order to reach out and change that setting on the remote server. This kind of remote management becomes not only efficient, but necessary as we start dealing more with headless servers. Our rolling out server core and nano core instances is something that I hope to see in all organizations over the next few years. And interfacing with these servers is going to take a shift in your administrative mindset. By becoming familiar with accomplishing daily tasks from inside PowerShell now, you will better equip yourself for future administration of these headless machines that are going to require you to interface with them in this way, working with PowerShell. The first step to doing real work with PowerShell is getting comfortable interfacing with the platform and becoming familiar with the daily routines of working from this command line rather than relying on your mouse pointer. Here we will explore some of the most common ways that I have seen server administrators use make use of PowerShell in order to enhance their daily workload. Launching PowerShell, pretty simple. The first thing we need to do is get PowerShell opened up and start using it. The PowerShell console is installed by default in Windows Server 2016. So you can run it from the start menu, pin it to the desktop or access it in any way that you normally open any application. Since I tend to refer using my keyboard for everything, the way that I normally open PowerShell is to hold down the win key and press R in order to open our run prompt. Type the word PowerShell and press enter. As you can see in the preceding screenshot, since I'm logged in as a local administrator on my server, the PowerShell prompt has been opened with elevated permissions. It is important to note that just like command prompt, you can open a PowerShell prompt with either regular user permissions or elevated administrator privileges. It is generally safer to work within a regular PowerShell session that does not have elevated rights unless the task that you're trying to accomplish requires those extra permissions. You also have the option of entering into a PowerShell prompt from inside an existing command prompt window. Normally when you are working from command prompt, you cannot make use of any PowerShell CMD let. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. Open a regular command prompt window, then type PowerShell and press enter. Instead of opening a separate PowerShell window, your prompt changes, but the application window itself remains the same. You now have entered the PowerShell shell from inside the black command prompt window. And you can start us utilizing CMD lets as you wish. You can move from PowerShell mode back to regular command prompt by typing exit. Default execution policy. When you are working with the PowerShell command line interface directly, you can simply open up PowerShell, start typing CMD lets and start getting work done. However, one of the big advantages to using PowerShell comes when you start playing around with creating, saving and running scripts. If you open up PowerShell, create a script and then try to run it, you will sometimes find it fails with a big messy error message such as this one. This shouldn't happen on a fresh instance of Windows Server 2016, but it could if you have any GPOs being applied to your new server, or if you're using a different operating system and are trying to run some PowerShell scripts, you might find yourself stuck at one of these error messages right out of the gate. While the nature of some versions of Windows to block this running of scripts by default is a security enhancement. It can be a nuisance to work around when you're trying to get something done. Thankfully, if you do encounter this problem, the, resolu the resolution to this issue is easy. You simply need to adjust 
the default execution policy, DEP, inside PowerShell so that it allows the execution of scripts to happen properly. This is not a simple on-off switch. There are five different levels within the default execution policy and it's important to understand each one so that you can set your DEP accordingly based on the security that you want in place on your servers. Here are descriptions of each level in order of the most to least secure restricted. The restricted policy allows commands and CMD lets to run, but stops the running of scripts altogether. All signed. This requires that any script being run needs to be signed by a trusted publisher. When set to all signed, even scripts that you write yourself will have to be put through that validation process and signed before they will be allowed to run remote signed. Remote signed is the default policy in Windows Server 2016. For scripts that have been downloaded from the internet, it requires that these scripts are to be signed with a digital signature from a publisher that you trust. However, if you choose to create your own scripts, it will allow these local scripts to run without requiring that digital signature unrestricted. Scripts are allowed to run on, sorry, scripts are allowed to run signed or unsigned. You do still receive a warning prompt when running scripts that have been downloaded from the internet bypass. In bypass mode, nothing is blocked and no warnings are given when you run scripts. In other words, you're on your own. Sometimes a single execution policy doesn't meet all of the needs. Depending on how you utilize PowerShell scripts, DEPs can be further enhanced by setting an execution policy scope that allows you to set different execution policies to different aspects of the system. For example, the three scopes that you can manipulate are process, current user, and local machine. By default, the DEP affects local machine so that any scripts running it here, the DEP. But if you need to modify this behavior so that different DEPs are set for the current user or even an individual process, you have the ability to do that. If you are unsure about the current status of your DEP or suspect that someone may have changed it, you could easily view the currently assigned execution policy with a simple CMD called get execution policy. As you can see in the following screenshot, mine is set to restricted, which explains my error message when I tried running the script. Once you have decided on the level of DEP that you want on your server or workstation, you can set it accordingly with a quick CMD let as well. For example, since this is a test lab and I want scripts to be able to run and I am not really concerned about security, since I am isolated, I'm going to change mine to unrestricted. Here is my command for doing just that. Set execution policy unrestricted using the tab key. Before we get started navigating around inside PowerShell, there is one more important note I want to point out. Get used to processing that tab key when you're inside the PowerShell prompt. If you type the first few letters of any command or CMD let and then press tab, the remainder of the CMD let name will be automatically populated on the screen. If I type get co and then press tab, my prompt automatically populates the full get command CMD let. Since there are multiple CMD lets that started with get co, if you press tab numerous times, you can see that it cycles through all of the available CMD lets that start with those letters. Tab also works with file and folder names, for example, 
I downloaded a hotfix that needs to be installed onto a server. I want to launch this hotfix using the PowerShell prompt that I already have open, but I don't want to spend an entire minute or more trying to type out the huge file name of this hotfix. I have already navigated to the folder where my hotfix resides. And now if I simply type the first few letters of the file name and press the tab key, PowerShell will populate the remainder of the file name. From there, all I need to do is press enter to launch that installer. Useful command using, sorry, useful CMD lets for daily tasks. When I started incorporating PowerShell into my daily workflow, I found it useful to keep a list of commonly used commands and CMD lets nearby until you get to the point where they become memorized and second nature. If you don't have a quick and easy way to recall those commands, chances are that you aren't going to use them and will revert to the old methods of configuring your servers. Here's a list of some of the items I use regularly when I'm building servers. Some are traditional commands that also work from a command prompt and some are CMD lets, but they are all useful when working inside a PowerShell window, get command. We already discussed this one in a little bit more detail. It is useful for finding additional commands or CMD lets that you may not want to run or research, get command name. Example, enhance the usefulness of get commands by adding the name switch to the end of it so that you can filter results to whatever types of CMD let you are searching for, GCM. This is a simply, this, it, this is simply a short alias for get command. I only wanted to point this one out because some of the PowerShell CMD lets have aliases like GCM, which allow you to launch these commonly used CMD lets with fewer keystrokes. Get alias. Since we just mentioned the GCM alias for get command, you may be wondering what other aliases are available inside PowerShell. To see a complete list, simply plug in the get alias CMD let rename computer. This allows you to set a new host name for the server at computer. Use the at computer CMD let to join servers to a domain host name. This displays the name of the system you're currently working on. I use host name all of the time to make sure that I'm really working on the server that I think I am. Have you ever rebooted the wrong server? I have. By running a quick host name command, you can give some peace of mind that the function you're about to perform is really happening on the right system. Um, dollar sign env computer name this one also presents you with the host name of the system you're working on but i call this uh one out to show that powershell can easily tap into your environment variables in order to pull out information the more simple host name sorry the more simple hosting command is useful when you are logged in to a local system and are simply trying to verify its name, but the ability to pull information like this from a variable like dollar sign E and V computer name will be much more useful when creating scripts or trying to perform a function against a remote system. Log off. The name is self-explanatory. Log off just logs you out of the system rather than trying to find the sign out function by clicking around in the user interface of your server, you can throw a quick log off command into either a command prompt or a PowerShell window and it will immediately log you off that session. I use this one all of the time when closing out RDP connections. Shut down or restart computer. Both of these functions are useful 
for shutting down or restarting a server on my own computer. These commands are most commonly preceded by the hostname command. When rebooting a server, you want to take special care that you restart the correct machine. So I find it most reliable to open a PowerShell prompt, do a quick hostname check, and then run a restart command from that same prompt. This ensures that I'm restarting the server, which was returned in the hostname output. Um, shutdown or T0. If you run a simple shutdown command, the system will shut down in one minute. I'm not sure why this is the default and I have never found any, I, any IT administrator who actually wanted to wait an extra minute before shutting down their system. Instead, it is more efficient to set a time limit before that shutdown commences. In this command, I have told the shutdown command that I want to restart instead of shutting down. That is forward slash R. And I've also told it to wait zero seconds before performing this restart. This way it happens immediately. I don't have to sit around and wait for, the, for that default 60 seconds query user or queue user, often most useful in RDS environments. The query user command will display all of the users that are currently logged into that server. Q user computer web one. Using Q user in combination with the computer switch allows you to see the currently logged in users on a remote system. This way you can remain logged into a single server in your RDS farm, but check on the user sessions for all of your systems without having to log into them. You can even write a script that runs this command against each of your session host servers and outputs that data to a file. Um, install Windows feature, as we have already discussed, use PowerShell to simplify the installation of roles and features onto your server. New, sorry, new, Net IP address interface index 12 IP address 10.0.0.100 prefix lent 24 default gateway 10.0.0.1. Use new net IP address in order to assign IP addresses to your NICs. Keep in mind that the information in the preceding CMD let is clearly example data that needs to be replaced with your own information. Set DNS client server address interface index 12 server addresses 10.0.0.2, 10.0.0.3, often used in combination with new net IP address. Use this one to set the DNS server address in your NIC properties. So I'm going to leave it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like sharing and subscribing. Thank you.